right? Maybe for a particular product or service. Um, and then in this case, we are doing some, a little bit of prep work here to kind of remove uh, names, departments, etc. right? And then you'll notice here, you have English selection here, right? Um, and then we're picking the Vader algorithm. And then okay. in this case, we're looking at the title and the review text, right? To understand um, how to process this information. And then literally you have even the age bracket, right? So some of the verbiage and stuff may be relative to different age brackets. So it's, it's good to kind of see that broken out. And then really you even see like an aggregation here, right? Um, understanding, hey, is there a particular group of individuals that um, loves our products, right? So are we hitting our target market? Um, what's that sentiment score look like, right? So it looks like we're pretty solid in the 30s. Um, and then when we start to analyze this, right, maybe we want to do a quick sort here. So I can do a sort and say, okay, what's some of the uh, top products that we have? So it looks like it's tops for uh, 18 to 34, right? And then intimates kind of for everybody, right? And then you have tops again here for the other age brackets, right? And then if we were to examine this, you've got some visualization going on. And if we wanted to look at those charts, we could take a look here, right? Oof, these colors are a little rough, you know. <laughs> Maybe this one needs to end yeah. up on the, on the conversation tomorrow. Yeah. Um, but this is great because it helps you kind of understand where the sentiment is overall with the the different age brackets, right? So uh, here it's it's tops, right? And then for 35 to 44, it's intimates, right? And then that seems to kind of work its way across the board. And then again, at 55 to 64 and 65 plus. So it looks like you have really two key products, right? Yeah. But if you were trying to figure out how to market and stuff, that's where I look at hey, what's the uh, analysis and stuff? It looks like we got Roberto joining us, just saying, hey, folks, hey, Roberto. And then uh, Steve joining us as well. Hey, Steve. Hey, uh, so I think when we look at this, right, uh, what I appreciate is how quickly we can use some of these algorithms. Um, and we got somebody literally saying punch it chewy right like <laughs> that's yeah. what i think of whenever we're applying some of these algorithms is it's a way yeah. for you kind of to get ahead of the curve right and do some initial analysis on this so what what are some things that you've kind of seen in your work experience uh you be able to kind of apply to uh algorithms like this being your father right yeah, I mean, you, you, you think about it when you're doing like um, media activity, you could use some of this algorithm to check what is my more effective maybe media activity that I'm doing, like mm. uh, things like that. Um, just, you know, they, they, you know, this is the good thing about you. You're, you're showing this, right? And somebody may want to get into data science or they want to become data science, like what they call a like somebody that Listen, doesn't really have to be a data science. And can yeah. still use this. That's awesome, right? Like uh, somebody can still use things like this. Is the the advantage of using tools like Altrix? Hey, you can do some data science here. Who knows? I mean, and and you can still help your company. So yeah, and I think when we look at this, right, you have access to the algorithm. So if we mm -hmm. go back to that that page that I was sharing, right? So literally, if again, if you haven't checked out towards data science, I would mm -hmm. recommend checking it out. Um, it literally helps you understand what the problem is, right? And then you also have, okay, there's this text analysis that we're doing with the Vader algorithm, right? Which is in alignment with our theming, but there's also the NLTK uh, package that can be used, mm -hmm. right? And then this is like the, the battle versus light and dark, right? So you mm -hmm. take these two algorithms and uh, get them to uh, analyze some of the information, right? So the lexical features that exist here, 
Um, and then basically you're utilizing that polarity to understand, hey, is this typically a negative word, right? Or is it a positive word? word. Um, and then basically you're rating the overall sentiment of the entire review based off of that, like a combined score, right? Mm -hmm. So Emil, I know we worked at a company together, right? Um, at the, the theme parks and tell me, do you feel like this, this, this type of analysis actually works in every case? Absolutely. I mean, it worked work great. I mean, what's funny is that they call it dark, uh, Vader. And I was just thinking that, you know, if I was uh, one of the executives who wanted to see my clients when, or the people that went to the park went to the dark side, <laughs> like, <laughs> if they were, like negative, if they're like negative, if they went to Disney, uh, instead of going to where, you know, we used to work with Universal. I mean, it's just great for, uh, looking at those open-end questions or looking at the survey data where I went looking at my, uh, you know, is it everything negative? Is this, uh, what, what is my MPS net promoter scores? Is it going bad? You know, exactly. things like that. Uh, or are, honestly, how many companies have, uh, you know, so much feedback from their customers from surveys yeah. and they need to analyze that data somehow, you know, like, um, most of the stuff is just people just rating and feedback. What if you could download all your comments or ratings from Google? Uh, right now you go to you, you go to you know that you can go and say ratings and you can see all the reviews and yeah, you or maybe you work it. in in hr yeah. right yeah HR. So you've got reviews on Glassdoor. you've got exit exactly. interviews right um even from a finance perspective right mm -hmm. um maybe people are sending you emails and are behind mm -hmm. in payments right so what are they saying and maybe it's hey you have a bad product or bad shipping right i didn't receive mm -hmm. the product um, mm -hmm. which actually that reminds me, I've got to follow up with someone about something that I didn't receive this weekend because mm -hmm. literally it's that exact scenario. Right. Mm -hmm. And when we look at this, Hey, in the case that I had this weekend, right. Mm -hmm. Most of the information that I have is positive. I received most of the stuff that I was trying to get this weekend. Right. But there's actually one negative aspect that's kind of tied to that. Right. So if I were looking at this, Hey, I'm mainly neutral, but I'm, I'm negative. And maybe we're even tracking this over time, right? So maybe the first couple times I call in, hey, it's mainly a neutral conversation. Hey, you just forgot something I wanted to get cleaned up. Mm -hmm. Now, all of a sudden, it's been a week that's passed by. I still haven't received the item, right? Now I may become more negative. And that can give us a, a sense of timeline, right? How long uh, do I have to essentially recover this issue, right? So if we were looking at that, maybe there's something right now during COVID, we're all having supply chain issues, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe I'm having a supply chain issue. Ooh, I have to change up vendors. I don't even really have mm -hmm. time to vet whether this is the same quality that I had before, right? Because I just got to mm -hmm. get in here and make it happen, right? But mm -hmm. what I can do is analyze that on the back end, right? Because I fulfilled the orders and maybe I'm willing to make that right in the long run, right? And as we're kind of mm -hmm. talking about that, that's something like the second post that I have, mm -hmm. literally you can do this in 10 minutes, right? Wow. So um, as we're looking at this, that's 10 minutes, doesn't even necessarily have to be an Alteryx. You can learn how mm -hmm. to use these tools mm -hmm. and apply them that quickly. Mm -hmm. Because again, this is Python code. So as long as you have a code free or um, and a code friendly tool, right? Then you can kind of use this. And then really with Vader, it's going to, put it into four separate categories, right? Mm -hmm. So negative, neutral, positive, and then compound, which when we look at this, I mean, Yamil, what does this remind you of in terms of, of scores when we're talking? Yeah, about yeah, it? yeah. This is like, like, you know, when you have a, a question and somebody's saying, you know, like, yes or no, or like, uh, is that positive or negative uh, or experience, right? From the, yeah. uh, let's say for the experience also like top box and things like that when we used to do that when a five five scale question for a survey yeah. you have what is called a top box or detractor and your promoters uh, yeah it may even be similar right this is obviously more comprehensive but like a net promoter score net promoter so score. if you guys are using that right okay well why did they relate a uh give us a negative review right maybe they're a detractor because there's a specific 
issue that they had, right? And if you just fix that, everything else about their sentiment is positive, right? Exactly. So an example would be um, like if if you had the the we can go back to the women's clothing example here, right? So literally we have the uh, five products here with the highest proportion of negative reviews, right? Mm. So if we were to look at these, right? And then look at the word cloud and mm -hmm. then maybe that's what it is, right? Oh, our sizing is inaccurate, right? So mm. the rest of the purchasing experience could be amazing, but maybe we're missing that chart and it has the actual measurements, right? In centimeters or in inches for your waist, okay. um, or it has the like true fit, right? So, hey, you normally wear uh, a size 10 shoe, right? But our sizes run a little small. So maybe you need an 11, right? Mm -hmm. um, or the um, jeans, right? Apparently maybe the jeans or the fabric kind of come into play. I was just thinking, if you look at it, it it's tell, telling you a message. It seems like maybe the fabric is cheap or yeah. the material is cheap. So if you look at around the words, the material is disappointing. It's yes. cheap. It's uh, maybe the material is not the best or the fabric is not the best. Something yeah. like that. It could be that they're having problems with returns. It's the same thing. They maybe get it. It looks cheap. The material is not good then when they're trying to return it is they don't they cannot return it quickly enough maybe something like yeah. that is this that's actually really really interesting because i'm looking here and i just did this this is going to be to to decorate my wall here let me see if i can reach over here and get it with my headset still on mm -hmm. so literally here i've got these are mm -hmm. our felt squares right and you can see the full color palette um, I had to order this just because I wanted to understand, hey, what's the what's the quality of the material, right? Um, what are the different colors, right? And this is a product that they turn around and sell just because they want to ensure that you're happy, right? Mm -hmm. So when we look at this, there could be creative ways that we're kind of going about doing that. Mm -hmm. I mean, just like even with us in consulting, right? Do you Do you want somebody to try everything first, right? That's almost like doing an appetizer or having a wine tasting, right? So the if you're at a restaurant, they may come over and give you a sample of the wine before you actually get the the whole the whole drink, right? Mm -hmm. So whenever we do this, right? How can you really do this in in ten minutes? Because that just sounds crazy, right? Whenever mm -hmm. we're talking about this, how can you break this down to where you're really doing this and um, obviously uh darth vader with a bow right <laughs> we all know he's he's got a, a daughter in the family right so when we're looking at this um we could take different approaches on how to kind of apply this right and when we look at using a rule-based approach right versus doing statistical nlp there's a way that we can kind of um use uh these algorithms to be more responsive and so when we're trying to decide this, right, we've got to first identify, hey, is this a domain specific problem, right? Mm -hmm. And then do we have labeled data? So mm -hmm. um, I get one of the great questions that everybody always asks is, hey, when I'm sitting here trying to train my uh, algorithm, right, what's some of the best ways to do that? So Yamil, have you ever heard of the uh, Amazon Mechanical Turk? No, I have not. I mean, what what is it? What is that? Tell me a little bit about it. Yeah, so this is super interesting, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, if you check this out, literally access to an on-demand 24 by oh, 7 that, workforce. Yeah. Okay. Right? So, oh, what this geez. is, is let's say, for instance, I've got some manual processes, right? Mm -hmm. And it could literally be, in my mind, I always think of, like, the CAPTCHA, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, oh, man, I've got to tell me what this says because... I don't know what it reads, right? You essentially need a physical set of eyes to process that mm -hmm. information. Sometimes that happens, right? Mm -hmm. And so rather than having this huge temporary workforce, right? Um, or even like trying to aggregate the uh, stuff that you're trying to process enough, mm -hmm. right? We essentially can turn it into these little micro tasks, mm -hmm. right? Which will allow us to essentially 
uh, create a, they created a, Amazon created a marketplace, right? And they say, okay, put your tasks out here. And then, I mean, we're literally talking about, it could be pennies or a couple mm. dollars, right? Related to each of these tasks. So think about transcriptions, that kind of stuff. These individuals kind of go through and do that. So it's kind um, of a great way of, of managing that. And you can literally see, Hey, here's artificial intelligence, right. That's using it or even us foods. Um, so it's a great resource. Again, I, I'm throwing this in there. If you're trying to yeah. figure out these problems, right. It's a, yeah. it's a great way of, uh, making sure that you're able to, um, excel at some of this stuff. So, yeah, the, the one for the sentiment analysis for beta is there also, I see it in the chat. So if anybody's interested, there's it's out there. Yeah. Yeah, definitely check it out. I mean, if you're working through some of the stuff, right. And you've got some manual classification problems, you can use that. Um, and then when we're looking at this, right, you may have limited available funding, right? So mm -hmm. we can't, launch this big huge algorithm and we just want to do something quick and dirty maybe this is an ad hoc analysis that you want to do or if you're a citizen data scientist right mm -hmm. i just want to understand if there's any value here um, this is kind of a quick way of, of doing this um, is utilizing some of these uh, algorithms right and then you you have lexicons right so mm -hmm. this is essentially um aspects where you can uh reference some of the data right mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and so when we look at this that's what allows you to do kind of that um net promoter score almost with a positive and negative labeling right mm -hmm. so being able to do that successfully um really helps kind of tie some of this in um and what's interesting is um there's there's definitely tons of blogs on this right and when we're doing this i mean literally you have uh old blogs and stuff right so if we're looking at some sentiment analysis uh, roberto uh shared this where he said hey like if That's you cool. mm -hmm. wanted to do some analysis right you you could try and understand even different languages right uh, and that's part of where like the, uh, the classifications and stuff come in is you will still need to use these, uh, algorithms to reclassify new languages. Nice. That's all. Awesome. <clears throat> that's pretty cool. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. So as we kind of dive in here, right, if you're looking mm -hmm. for some of these natural language processing components, there's definitely different ways that you can get at this, right? So if I were working with others, I may be trying to use some of the computer vision to bring in uh, images, right? So maybe there's in reviews now, people do a lot of pictures. Um, they'll even do uh, crazy things, right? Like they'll do a full on video, right? In addition to a picture and another review. And those are typically some of the most viewed ones, right? And when we kind of do that, I have something here related to call center data, mm -hmm. um, which ties in um, Alteryx and again, some more natural language processing through uh, Veritone, which has the AIware tools, right? And with these, what you're actually doing here is this is processing speech, right? From an MP4. Wow. So when we do this, literally I could start with maybe this is the initial step, right? hey, let me just separate out the individuals that are speaking. So if you're part of a call center, you're doing call center analytics, I could separate this out, mm -hmm. right? And identify the individual speakers, mm -hmm. relate those individual speakers to the call, and then do the Vader algorithm, right? Where I would say, hey, what's their overall sentiment? Are my sales reps, right? Or my customer support, are they being positive during the conversation, right? Or is it negative and negative? And that's why we're getting negative out of it, right? Um, or can that positivity from a uh, support representative really counter some of the negativity from the customer, right? Amazing. And then we can see that kind of tracking it over time throughout the conversation, right? You can really get sophisticated with this stuff and uh, take things to the next level. 
So on this one or the other one, can you point out maybe one or two of the Altrix tools that maybe a lot of people don't use a lot, or maybe there's not mm. like the most common ones that someone that is not, let's say someone that it's uh, maybe higher than intermediate level of expertise on Altrix, maybe doesn't use a lot or something that it's uh, very- Yeah, different. so I think one of my favorite ones here mm -hmm. on this workflow would be the join multiple. Right. Oh, okay. Okay. That's so this cool. literally lets you join multiple inputs at the mm. same time, and I mean you've got a couple different configuration options. Let's say you pull all these records in, you're adding additional fields, but it, you're handling them separate, right? Um, so I'll give you an example. Maybe we're parsing the speakers out, right? So those speakers would technically all be on the same record. And then we may be doing something to adjust their speech, right? Mm -hmm. So we could have something for the customer. I don't know, maybe we bleep out swear words or something, right? Mm -hmm. And then for the uh, individual who's on the support side, we may have key words that they're supposed to be saying every time, right? So we we're doing some analysis on those, but they're all part of the same record and we separate them out, do that individual analysis, and then we want to bring them all back together, right? So this allows us to really do that. Um, and you could join based off a of record position, right? Or maybe we mm -hmm. have uh, a call ID, right? We could pull that mm -hmm. information back together there as well. So it makes it pretty sweet, right? So you can do some Jedi mind tricks mm -hmm. um, and basically say, hey, this is not the droid you're looking for, right? Exactly. Um, and kind of go in and search some of that stuff. And then if we're looking here on this side, um, uh -huh. What about the side? Yeah, I was going to ask you. What is that one that it's underneath uh, of the... Yeah, those two. That one and the one on the left. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so these ones are the, the text processing ones, right? So these are text mining tools. Okay. Um, and actually, they have a new one that just came in here mm -hmm. um, as of 21.4, which is the named entity recognition, right? Wow. So it can literally pick out like company names and stuff, which is pretty cool. Because a lot of times you're looking for that, right? So, hey, are they mentioning my company's name or a product? Or the competition. Or the competition. Yeah. yeah. So who are they mentioning, right? If I'm buying mm -hmm. mattresses or something. So are they mentioning Sealy, right? Or, um, I mean, or... I think this is very awesome, uh, this one. Because I'm thinking, let's say that I am doing a tons of surveys, right? A tons of feedback or surveys. And then people are getting out of my company. Like, let's say we're now you're getting out of this park or this hotel and you're, you're actually, you know, getting all of this information. Yeah. How many customers get confused with where they were supposed to be? They're getting confused. Oh, this is owned by Marriott. No, that's not owned by Marriott. Or this is yeah. Disney. No, that's not Disney. That's Universal. And yeah. they're getting confused. Now you can grab them with this and figure out if you need to improve your communication of your company. That's actually, that's really big, right? So I used mm -hmm. to work at uh, Advent Health mm -hmm. and, you know, a few years ago they had a huge rebranding, right? Mm -hmm. So they had a bunch of subsidiaries and then they mm -hmm. standardized all the names to Advent oh, right. Health. Yeah. Um, but it, it used to be all these outpatient facilities. So if you went there like for urgent care or something, right, that had a separate name for ur the urgent care, right? It was, uh, I believe it was Centricare. Centricare. So then they rolled that all under a company, right? And that helps you with brand equity, right? Because whereas you may have had a really good experience, oh, Ritz Carlton, right? Ooh, that's, that's really nice, mm -hmm. right? But ironically, that's under the Marriott brand. The Marriott right? brand, correct. So when we look at the prestige of the brand, in some instances, you want them to be related, right? Mm -hmm. And together, in other instances, you may want them to be separated. So when we look at some of those things, it's important to drill into all those levels. And then, I mean, shoot, even name recognition, right? We've got the uh, great resignation going on. Where mm -hmm. are all your people going, right? Correct. Is there something that we're seeing? Are they all going to Amazon, right? Mm -hmm. Or is it... Uh, everybody from Disney is going to Universal, right? Or Verizon to T-Mobile, right? So what, what are some of the things that you're seeing that are kind of happening, right? How is that occurring? And then you can use that name recognition to understand, oh, yeah, 
here's the reason why they're going. Maybe there's more recognition at company A than there is at company B, right? Um, maybe we need to look at some of their practices, right? It could be simple like uh, leave, right? Or benefits or, or something else that we need to identify that we can improve upon, right? Um, in, in terms of competition. Or maybe there's something completely opposite, right? We've been focusing heavily on the negative. Maybe there's something you're really doing well, right? That you just need mm -hmm. to highlight more. So if you're going out and trying to find new employees, what are some of the biggest things that your company can have, right? That would inspire them to join the light side, right? right, right. Um, what's going to encourage them to do that? Hey, you should be really relaxed, right? Um, Yoda is still the strongest mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. all the Jedi, right? Mm -hmm. um, so what is it that you're kind of capturing in terms of the story there, right? Um, or is it that you're playing off the emotions and trying to, to harness some of that energy? So. That's right. Awesome. No. Yeah. yeah so mm -hmm. um, this one's definitely been a fun one, Emil. I know we always have more, right? I'm excited to see what we have tomorrow. Um, do you want yeah. to touch tomorrow a little bit on? Great. Yeah, tomorrow's going to be great. Uh, if anybody wants to join us, we're going to have a great visualization. There's just way too many uh, out there, very good ones related to Star Wars. Uh, we seriously have, I think, awesome ones to talk about. And it should be really fun. It should be a lot of fun. A lot of fun tomorrow. Great week. And tomorrow is the actual day, right? May the 4th. Yeah, be May the 4th. You. All May right. The 4th. Be with you. Exactly. So. And I definitely recommend. Uh, checking out, watching our social media tomorrow because we've really got some fun stuff mm -hmm. um, that we'll be sharing, right? So you could see a land saying on there, a hey, Star Wars content this week, right? So make sure you keep an eye out because we've got some fun stuff we'll be showing. Um, and then please stay tuned next week. And then if you haven't signed up for the conferences already, right? Make sure you do that. Uh, Follow us individually on social media, right? Mm -hmm. We'll be doing some posts live from the conferences. We'd love to see you there. Um, you can check out our sessions as well. Um, mm -hmm. On our channel, we've got, um, no joke, uh, 10 of them that we're doing in total for uh, Inspire, right? Wow. And then we also have one at the Tableau conference, which is going to be mm -hmm. an amazing panel, right? Yeah. Um, for the show that's winning awards and and helping so many people. So exactly. please make sure you, you check out. And then if you have friends that are going to the conference, we would love to see you and them there. Um, don't hesitate to share it. Yeah, so May, May 16, 17, 18, 19, if you are in Vegas or I think, uh, I forgot. Uh, Denver. Denver, 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 sorry. In Denver, or if you're going to the conference, just if you're going to the conference, Tablo conference, Altris conference, just let us know. We'd love to meet you, to meet you there. Uh, it doesn't matter. I mean, just let us know. If you're going, we'd love to meet you there. Got to grab some coffee, a beer, maybe. So who knows? Yeah. Uh, it's just let us know. We're going to be there. Then, I mean, it's going to be on both conferences. That they're in the same week. And we're going to have, like uh, Andrew said, speakers on both conferences. So we're going to have okay. sessions on both. And, yeah, just let us know. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you, everyone. Happy Tuesday. Happy Star Wars week. Yeah. And may the fourth thank be you. with you tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, I know you guys like it. <laughs> awesome. Oh. So, yeah, thank you so much. We look forward to week. the next episode. Yeah, next week.